India is considered an unsafe place for women. But that's old news. Turns out it isn't any safer for goats. On the 25th of July, a goat in the new district of Haryana was gang raped by eight men. The goat was 50 weeks pregnant. Now, two of these eight men have been arrested and they probably have a perfectly good explanation for their actions. One or all of the following. The goat was out late at night. She was wearing little, actually nothing. She was hanging out with male friends. So, you know who's to blame. The only reason you know of the story is because of this man. He's Aslub Khan. The goat was his. That in his hand is the FIR. That he got one registered is a miracle in itself. Because police inaction was something that even the offenders were counting on. Human Rights Watch confirms the fact that the police are not always willing to file FIRs, especially if the victim is poor or marginalized. That's for humans. Aslub Khan was fighting for justice for his goat. The two men caught are barely 22 years old. All of the eight men were locals and, according to the police, alleged history cheaters. While most young men chase women, why were these eight chasing goats? Could it have something to do with Haryana's sex ratio, which, by the way, is the worst in the country? What really goes on in the minds of those who commit the crime of bestiality? Let's break it down. Bestiality. That means humans having sex with animals. Just so there is no confusion, it is a crime and there are specific laws to punish it. Section 377 of the IPC actually, but let's get there a little bit later. Let's first try and figure out the concept of bestiality. For starters, how unusual is the case of goat from Nu? Not so unusual it seems. A study conducted by Raki Shukla of the voice of street dogs has found that the dog rape rate in the country is in the same range as the women rape rate. Well, it's very difficult to, uh, to quantify exactly how many number of cases have happened and also the, what is the kind of uh, um, you know, uh, convic uh, um, conviction rates that come into this, into the, into the space. Um, because one of the parties is not, uh, there is no way that they can, you know, they can uh, go and report this situation. I took out the archives and the poor goat became all but a speck in the number of reported cases of bestiality in India. But for every one of these, there are many, many more that just never get reported. But sometimes the stories are just so horrid that the police has to act on complaints. In 2016, a video of a man raping a dog in Kerala went viral. This wasn't the first time a video of such a dastardly act was recorded, but it was for the first time that the face of the man assaulting an animal was caught on camera. When the video reached Sally Cunnan, who works as a paraveterinarian with the Humane Society, she decided to lodge a complaint. He was a married man in his 40s and he had abandoned his wife and uh, children. We had to explain to the police officers that this was what the section is and it has to be taken seriously. And the police traced him and uh, they arrested him from Kotem. Sally's effort of making that complaint paid off. But sadly, that dog in the video is not the only animal to be abused. But human sexuality doesn't just lie between the legs. Man's most powerful sexual organ lies here, in between the ears. Neuropsychology and neurology of sexual deviance is largely still elusive. Scientists have been trying to study it in connection with delinquency and criminality in general. So has there been any understanding of the mind of the animal sexual abuser? The director at the Institute of Human Behaviour and Allied Sciences that houses patients with a spectrum of medical concerns. In mental retardation, in autism, in dyslexia, we know what happens and why and how. Uh, in mental illness, not only we know what happens, we also know how to correct them. 
The third is the mixed bag of uh, sexual deviation and perversion. And bestiality is perversion. Oh yes, absolutely, clearly. Can we say that someone is more prone to or preconditioned to commit bestiality? Basically, who can commit bestiality? People with cruelty to animals, people who are socially indifferent and aloof, with cold indifferent human relationships, people who are seen to be bashing up animals or young kids without reason, unprovocatively, you know. Okay. I, I remember having seen two cases in the last 30 years, one from a rural background and one from an urban background. There is very little in science for treating people with such perversion. People might have sex with a lady and in the same night or on the same day go ahead and do such perverted acts. So it isn't really all about sexual frustration and not getting an outlet. That's too much of a simplification. So is it then about sexual fetish or a par game? Simple cruelty towards animals. A warning sign towards an interest for bestiality worldwide is a rise in trends for things like bestiality tourism and bestiality porn. A quora question, have you experienced bestiality, has affirmative responses. Some go on to give grotesque details. Founder of the NAS Foundation, Anjali Gopalan runs All Creatures Great and Small, a shelter for rescued and abandoned animals and views the story from the other side of the fence, the animal's perspective. Animals don't count. Anyone who doesn't have a voice does not count in our culture. I have a dog who was sexually abused by three men. Unfortunately, we, I couldn't catch them. Tying this dog, all four legs to a tree with the prolapsed an anus. Five surgeries over a period of a year is what it took to treat this animal. The reported cases are not even the tip of the iceberg. It's that bad. We have, we have laws. But are we willing to uh, act on them is the issue. The law in question is Section 377 of the IPC. In fact, it's the only one protecting the animal from its abuser right now. But it is also the law that makes all homosexuals criminals. Ironically, Anjali's NAS Foundation has waged a decade-long battle to decriminalize homosexuality. Today, I find myself in a situation where I'm also fighting for 377 because it's one of the few laws which will punish bestiality. Male-on-male -male rape and bestiality are the two things that get addressed by 377. So it's critical that 377 remains in place. But what about the Prevention to Animal Cruelty Act? The Prevention to Cruelty Against Animals Act is one of the most ridiculous acts on this planet. Um, you get the punishments are like 50 rupees for cruelty. 50 rupees. What do you think? Is bestiality a bane of the modern times? It's been happening for centuries. It's not something that's very new. The Lakshman temple in Khajuraho has, amidst tight embraces, threesomes, sex circuses, this, an orgy involving a horse. Although shame is not completely out of the picture here as well. And it isn't just ancient India. Greek and Roman mythologies are replete with references to bestiality. Clearly, the concept of bestiality has seen an arc, from inspiring art to generating disgust. And somewhere in the middle lies the realm of fantasy for those who commit this crime.